Today we are going to talk about misunderstanding of law and grace. Law and grace. Some people say that they are under grace. That law is no longer existing. That Christ has abolished law. So they are enjoying grace now. And the, the other people said that law is still existing. That Christ did not abolish that law. So we are going to talk about law and grace. Number one, what is law? I understand that law is the rules and regulation. In any state or any country that regulates that, the citizens of that country. And in obeying it, it has reward. In disobeying it, it has consequence. That is what I can explain to you as law. Because every country has law. There is no country without law. And whenever you see a lawless country, it will not never be classified as a country. Don't forget that heaven is a country entirely. And the earth is another country. Two realm, heavenly realm and earthly realm. So, law is rules and regulations. God mapped out. So, what is that grace? What is grace? Grace is ability to obey God. That is what I understand about grace. Grace is an ability to obey God, ability, someone to have strength and ability, spiritual empowerment to live according to God's demand. That is grace. So now, did Christ abolish law? And if yes, what kind of law Christ abolished? Don't forget that the word of God is law. Every word of God is law. Because Bible says forever, O oh God, your word is settled in heaven. So even Satan marked the word of God very, very honorable. Angels of God value God's word. Satan value God's word. So the word of God is law. From Genesis to Revelation, every word you see there is law. Because it is law because God is not, is not running democracy. What oppressed in the kingdom of God is theocracy. Theocracy. If I mean theocracy. That is the, the, the leadership of God. God being the senator. God don't need house of assembly. Don't need house of prayer. Don't need anybody to contribute for him to make law. Every word he said stands. Bible said that the word of a king carries power. And no one can question the king and say, what doest thou? So every word of God is law. So some people that say that God has abolished, Christ has abolished law. It's not true. There is one side of law Christ abolished. And that law is the law of sin and death. That is the only law Christ abolished. According to the word of God in the book of Romans chapter 8, the Bible makes us to understand, now therefore, from verse 1, now therefore, there is no more condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not live after the flesh, but after the spirit. Look at verse 2. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus, for the law, for the law, not for the, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has delivered me and you from the law of sins and death. So law in Christ Jesus law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus delivered us from another law called the law of sin and death. So Lord deliver us from law. We are delivered from demonic law, from satanic law to obey the laws of God. So Christ did not abolish the word of God. The law Christ abolished was that ceremonial law, that law that, that, that said uh, that law, like for, exam uh, for example, that said, oh, you cannot plant two variety of crop in a one piece of land. That is to say, you cannot plant cassava and plant maize together in olden days. He said, you cannot plant uh, pumpkin leaf and plant um, tomato together. So in those days, the law, 
regulate those things that you will plant one set of crop, one particular piece of land. But today we plant corn together with cassava, together with uh, uh, together with yam, and it's no longer a sin. And also that law of sin and death, law of sin and death, because in those days set a hard power over man, set a hard power over man. Man is not qualified to stand before God, but we know that Satan do appear before God, but man cannot appear before God. You remember the, the, the time God and his angels were having meeting. Adam is supposed to be there, but Adam has been disqualified because he committed a sin called trancing. Trancing. He had committed that sin of trancing. So he cannot appear before God. Devil went to represent man in heaven. Devil went to represent man in heaven. That visitation of Satan to heaven supposed to be Adam. Adam was the one that was supposed to go and go and attend that meeting in heaven. But he was disqualified. Remember the time that Jesus came into the world. Satan approached Jesus and said, if you can bow down to me, I will give you all the glories of this world because it has been given to me. Who gave it, who gave it to him? Adam surrendered the whole thing to him. So now, when Christ came, he delivered us from that law. He delivered us from that rules and regulation that Satan has set up that no man will appear before God. Christ delivered us. Today, you and I can appear before God. But to say that God has abolished his law, his word, because every word of God generally is law. That is why some people, they are committing sin, they are living in sin, they, they are behaving anyhow they like, they are smoking, they are drinking, they are drunkard. In one way or the other, sometimes you see them drunk, sometimes you see them committing immorality, sometimes you see them committing fornication, committing adultery, committing all sorts of sins, lying. Because they say, we are living under grace. We are not living under the law. No, the law of God exists. But we are delivered from the law of sin and death. But we are not delivered from the law of God. We are still bound to God's word called law. We are bound to God's law called the word of God. We are bound there. If you look at that that's Romans chapter 8 verse 1. He said, now therefore there is no more condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. No more condemnation of satanic laws for them who are in Christ Jesus. Why? He said, for the law of the spirit of life. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. So even in Christ Jesus, there is that law called the law of spirit and the life. That law of spirit and life has delivered us from the law of sin and death. So we keep law to be free from law. We keep the laws of God, that law of spirit of life in Christ Jesus, in order to be free from the law of sin and death. And that is why God gave us different rules and regulation. That is why the word of God carries a lot of promises. So that when we keep it, we'll be delivered from the wrong law, from the law of darkness that is operating in our life and our destiny. For instance, there are, there, there are many at times they say oh, uh, uh, that a cause is operating. You discover that cause has graced many people. You discover that many people are experiencing evil in one way or the other. But when you go to God's word, you will now see the provision God made in his word. Because the word of God makes us to understand how we will be free from what is happening to us, from the evil that is happening to us. The word of God makes us to help give us an example, or if I may call it expo, how to be free from the demonic realm, how to be free from that demonic law, from that law of sin and death that is existing in our destiny, existing in our family, in one way or the other. Sometimes they call it family cause, sometimes they call it this and that, but the word of the Lord makes us to understand. So when you go to God's word and see what the word of God says and begin to engage in that word of God, in keeping the laws of that word of God, in that area you need solution. That is the law of spirit of life in Christ Jesus, which will deliver you from the evil law of sin and death, of poverty, of wretchedness, of miserable life, of premature death. It will deliver you from every one of them. 
For instance, look at what the Bible said. The Bible said, give, it shall be given back to you. Good measure, shaken, run it over, press it down. Shall the Lord send men to add to your bosom. So when you see a man that is experiencing poverty, experiencing lack, experiencing disgrace, experiencing lack of money, lack of favor, lack of finance, what is the law that we activate that favor? What is the law that we activate wealth? What is the law that we activate abundance? Is the law of giving. So that law, when, when you see someone engaging in giving, giving to God, giving for the preaching of gospel, giving for the kingdom of God, giving to the poor people, taking care of the needy, needy, taking care of the poor people, poor, taking care of the hungry people. Now, he is activating the law. He is operating on the law of the spirit of life that the Bible told us that is in Christ Jesus. It will deliver that individual from the law of sin and death. That is the law of poverty, the law of lack, the law of wretchedness, the law of miserable life. So, the Lord is correcting you in order to understand this. Forward this message to many people in your contact. Share this message to your friends. Let them hear the word of God. Join hands together with me. Let us save life. Do me a favor to subscribe to this channel or to follow this page. Depend the platform you are watching. And also, don't forget to leave your like, leave your comment, and also your suggestion. I am still your brother, Apostle Antonio Wanne. See you next time. And bye for now.